Well, sky watchers may have the chance to catch maybe a rare sight. We'll have to find that out this weekend. Just stay with us. It's being called a super blood wolf moon, and it's scheduled to appear Sunday night. So what exactly yeah. is that? No stranger to our viewers. Derek Bitts is the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute, and he is here to explain. Good morning, Derek. Good morning. Good morning. Always good to have mm -hmm. you. Thank okay, you. Okay, so we've heard of a super moon. Yes. We've heard of a blood moon. Yes. But now we're calling this a super blood Wolf moon. What is that? Well, it's <laughs> what's going on here is that the moon is at a point in its orbit where it's at its closest point to the Earth for the month, so that is going to make it appear larger and brighter in the sky, so that's why it's called super. Blood is because of the fact that we're actually going to see a total lunar eclipse Sunday night, mm. and the coloring that comes onto the surface of the moon because of the eclipse gives us the blood part. Mm. And then the wolf part, the term wolf is actually a cultural term that was first used by indigenous Americans to describe full moons of each month. So there's a full moon name for each month. So we have super blood wolf moon. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, okay, or a you broke total it down. Lunar eclipse. And then we have the total lunar eclipse part on mm -hmm. top of that. Now, and none of these particular things is really rare. Lunar eclipses can happen several times a year. We have a, a name for uh, the full moon of every month, every month. Mm -hmm. And the red part is related to the lunar eclipse. So actually, none of it is all that rare. So there is a bit of a challenge this weekend. Of course, Katie's been talking about it all morning. We're going to have some you know, not so great weather. Do you think we'll be able to see it? I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we will. Uh, the way the weather pattern seems to be looking right now is that I'm hoping that things clear out enough Sunday night so that we'll have a clear sky, although it will be cold. And the eclipse starts at about 9.30 in the evening and runs until 2.30 in the morning. But people don't have to be out that whole time. Mm -hmm. It's better to go out, in this case, because it's going to be so cold, at punctuated times just to see the highlights. And so I would suggest if you go out at like 11.15, see the moon then, go back again at 12.12 when we're at the maximum of the eclipse. Okay. And then if you're still into it, if you're up at around 1 o'clock in the morning, you'll be able to see the tail end of the most coloration on the moon. And that's the timing that I've described is when we have the most coloration on the moon. On a personal oh, yeah. note, that's really exciting because that's around the time that I wake up for work. Uh, so well, that's perfect. That's perfect. Timing yes. and location yeah. also. Yes. Can we see this with the naked eye or do we need a telescope? The cool thing about this is you don't need a telescope to see this. You can just go outside and look up. And that's really the best way to see it because any magnification will give you less than the entire moon. Mm -hmm. So binoculars could be useful to help you get a better view. But I wouldn't recommend a telescope at all. And besides, it's going to take too long for a telescope. Just go out, yeah. take a look up, enjoy the view <laughs> at the appropriate Nine degrees. Times. We don't want to be out there too long anyways. No, we do not. <laughs> and Derek, before we let you go, so it's not so rare, but are there still things that scientists and astronomers can perhaps learn from this event? Sure. Right now, the major thing that scientists are trying to understand about the moon is how the surface of the moon cools. And during a lunar eclipse, they have a really wonderful opportunity to use one of the satellites that's orbiting orbiting the moon. It's the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter that's been there for a number of years, taking really high resolution photographs of the surface. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to use temperature gauges or temperature sensors on that satellite to be able to track how quickly the surface of the moon chills as it goes into the Earth's shadow. And that will help them to understand some of the thermal characteristics of the lunar soil. Yeah. So this is pretty cool stuff happening. Right? It is pretty good, cool stuff, yeah. And it's also just really cool to see yeah. a lunar eclipse. Yeah. yeah, You may not like the branding, but we like how it gets people excited about science. And that's that's a good thing. I can accept it for that. If we can get people outside to look up, that's always a wonderful thing. I'll be watching. Thank you, Derek. Always Same good to here. have you. Thanks.